Hello, everyone. I did not bring the bell tonight. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that bell can rest on my shelf. It is way too loud, um, and and I'm already. And plus, I'm already extra enough as it is. I mean, let's be honest here. My name is David Green with an E because I'm just that extra. I need the extra E. 
Lord. But it works. Um, so anyway, so thank you everyone for coming out to the Katie Lions Club's um, community night. This is August 4th. Um, I just want to introduce, ooh, we have people coming in the building. That's awesome. Um, I just want to go through the, uh, the roster of who is you know, on the board, the coordinators, the advisors, etc. So again, my name is David Green. I am the president of our organization. Uh, my first vice president is actually in the hospital right now. Her name is Lydia. Uh, so my thoughts and prayers are with her as she gets her x-ray done. Uh, second vice president, Tawana Goodwin, who is also our education chair. Uh, she is currently at her brand new job. And so she, we're hoping that she comes in later tonight, but I'm not gonna do my fingers crossed because I know she gonna be tuckered out and tired tonight when she gets done. Uh, then my treasurer over here, Sue Green. Uh, I have Secretary Maddie Thigpen, my service chair, Tiffany Walker, who just got back from Dallas and her first stop was here. That's some dedication right there. Uh, Childhood Cancer Awareness Coordinator, that's Daniel Lee. He actually has another function that I am not allowed to talk about because we are not allowed to talk about politics at this organization. Um, so you can draw your own conclusions. Uh, our Diabetes Awareness Coordinator is J.D. Shipley. He is actually working one-on-one -on -one with a client. He actually runs Starting Strength Katie. Uh, we don't have a Disaster Relief Coordinator because the person who I wanted to do it is doing other things instead. Um, and we, that's the same reason we also don't have an Environment Coordinator. Our Hispanic Outreach Coordinator is Estella Yanez. She is actually in El Salvador right now. Um, so she's actually making friends with the El Salvador Lions. Our health fair coordinator is Representative Constance Jones from the uh, state of Texas Black Caucus. Um, our hunger uh, coordinator is Kiva Mackey from Children Lake Lonnie. Our Leo advisor is Caswell Jones. He works with the high school students. He's a world AP history teacher. And our new communities outreach coordinator, Alexandra Lowe. Our past club president, we're not allowed to call her the immediate past president because she's an associate member. But as far as I'm concerned, she's the best one, second only to me, Carol Barnett. <laughs> and then we have our vision coordinator, Latricia Garment, right over there. I was going to introduce our venue sponsor tonight. His name is Paul Oxendine. He's with Generations Solar. Unfortunately, he's actually making money helping a client right now, so um, he won't be here. Uh, but I'll just try to wing it instead. Generation Solar, it's basically the local um, chapter of Power Solar which is a nationwide um, solar panel organization, company, et cetera. Um, are, they are not themselves a solar developer. They are a broker, which means they can actually get you, uh, you know, they can actually compete against all the different products and get you the best product for you in your house. If you want to go with Generation Solar, you can get more information from our website at www.katielions.org. All right. Also, I was going to pin Tawana tonight as our LCI reported Leo Club advisor, since she is our education chair. But again, she's not here tonight, so we're going to skip that as well. I love this moving things along. I really do. Honestly. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to call up our amazing vision coordinator, Latricia, who's going to bring us some updates on our vision program. <laughs> I am usually well prepared. Uh, can you re-aim the mic for her? Oh, yeah. You're, she's got a scholarship. Uh, you're, you're not my height. <laughs> okay, so lately I have been going around to the different locations to collecting glasses, and it has been so exciting. There have been um, some really nice... Um, well, we can handle this kind of just shift okay. your body over just a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> Me. <laughs> um, the locations are really, really nice, and the um, where they're located, the uh, places are actually nice too. I've collected a lot of glasses. Some of the boxes were a bit worn out. I took those away, waiting for new boxes to come. Can't wait. Everybody's excited about getting the new boxes. Um, I have handed out several um, eyeglass vouchers. Um, some have used them, some have not. Um, um, but it was a privilege to pass those out and they are all thankful that they have glasses now. And I'm looking forward to getting more of new projects started. And thank you. <laughs> okay. 
So now, of course, I have to stand really far away from the mic because I've just I just blown up the volume, and of course, the volume plus me equals. I'm sorry for your eardrums. Uh, so now I'm going to ask Maddie to come up. We just recently um, announced a new partnership, and I want Maddie to tell us about it. The past president, Janine Harmstrong, my first, my advisor, was the guest speaker for her term was Tony Hodgson from New York. It was her ambition and dream for a club to be involved in a community garden here in Katy, while it has been taking a couple of years. We are pleased to announce that her vision finally was achieved. Thank you for your vote. The members, we are unanimous in our decision to party with a sponsor and neighborhood garden project on Francis Road. France Road. Okay, I hope that makes sense. You did. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and ask that uh, Carol, since you are uh, in her club now, since she transferred over to Brookshire, I'm going to ask if you would please, as our liaison, do us the incredible honor of uh, sharing with her that this has happened. I will tell her. She's um, out of the hospital. She's out of the hospital now. Excellent. Uh, so since we're a little bit ahead of schedule, I want to take a moment to just mention a couple of upcoming things, and this is more so for everyone who's going to be watching this when it's uh, streamed online. Um, we partnered with the Katie Heritage Society to offer a back to, you know, a adult continuing the workforce scholarship. So if you or someone you know needs to go, wants to go back to school, is an adult, go to the Katie Heritage Society's website. You can get that from our website, katielyons.org. Apply for that scholarship. So what's going to happen is this year, you know, normally they offer one scholarship a year. It's a $1,000 scholarship. This year, however, they're offering three. So the first one is being offered through the Katie Heritage Society's direct fund, um, fundraising. The second one is being offered through us. We're, you know, they're going to handle it the same as they normally do, and we're going to be you know, sponsoring it and paying for it. And the third one is actually being offered by a very generous but anonymous donor, um, who I actually don't know who it is, but I kind of want to find out because I want him to join us. Or her. Um, but I wanted to mention that is, is huge. Also, if you know a um, so, you know a young adult who is looking to go to the trade schools, have them reach out to Carol Barnett and the Brookshire Patterson Lions Club. She is working with the Brookshire Patterson Lions Club this year to you know offer us to excuse me to offer the uh, you know trade school you know scholarship as well. Um, so again, if you know anyone who you know wants to go into the trade schools. Have them reach out to us because we are offering that scholarship this year as well. These are two brand new scholarships for us. I also wanted to mention that um, this year we have massively expanded our um, Peace Poster Contest. In the past, so the last couple of years, our club has sponsored one Peace Poster Contest that went entry that went out to the district. And last year it actually made it as the state's representative uh, entry to the international. This year, we are actually sponsoring 17 competitions, one in each of the middle schools, the junior high schools. So if anyone knows anyone who is you know, 11 to 13 year old in the Katy ISD community, have them, have you parents, guardians, have a child reach out to the art teachers in those schools. Uh, because again, we want to have a massive showing. This year we're doing you know, education, that's, that's the theme for this year. You know, uh, we want to do education, seizing opportunities, um, and so I really wanted to highlight those two uh, very valuable, very useful items. Um, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and call Tiffany Walker, who is our service chair up, to talk more about upcoming service activities and also what we've done in the last you know, few weeks and so. All right, thank you guys. Thank you all for attending this evening's Lion Club meeting. Also, thank you to our sponsor, Paul Oxdine, for the space as well. 
Alrighty, now let's get into the fun part, service. All right, so we need about three more volunteers for tomorrow evening for the children like Lonnie back to school bash um, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And also speaking of children like Lonnie, they have their weekly food pantry, Wednesdays for the young at heart from four to six, and then also Thursdays from 12 to two. And um, please give Akiva for volunteer opportunities, even though as we all should find a day that works one day out the month to where we can all go and have Alliance Day to be able to volunteer for the food pantry. Um, that would be a fantastic opportunity for us to really get our name out there and not only get our name out there, but also to see 200 plus families come in every single week in order to be able to feed their families. Um, next up is our coveted health fair. So we're actually in the process of solidifying five vendors to pay. So once people pay, once particular vendors pay, their um, logo will be placed on the marketing material, marketed on the marketing material via our website, on the flyers, that's also sent out to social media once a week as well. So once you pay your fee, we'll add your logo onto the marketing material. And then um, our vision screening, it's actually August 11th, and I believe that will be here. Um, and also another, Thing that we have that works is that we will be partnering up with Hope Impact for suppers and showers, which will be in October. So if you have the means, it's going to be put posted up in the WhatsApp as well for a particular night, and it's going to be on a Thursday night as well. So what is suppers and showers and Hope Impact? Hope Impact is a nonprofit organization here in Katy, which we partnered up with before, as you know, Carol. Um, and they help the homeless community here in Katy. And so uh, exactly what it sounds like, it suffers. And say it with me, showers that the, the homeless are able to get. And it's at Cross Point Church. So again, that will be in October. We just all have to vote on a date that we all wanna go out and volunteer for that um, opportunity. That's where the homeless are able to get a hot meal and also a shower to you know, be fresh and you know, have cleanliness and everything like that. And if you've never had the opportunity to participate, it's truly a humbling experience. Um, also, as mentioned earlier, our community, new community garden is in the works as well. And gardening is scientifically proven to be a natural stress reliever, which we all need in these times. Okay, and then starting next month until December, Let's try to aim to bring at least four canned goods and one new toy per member per meeting, just so that we can get a head start on our canned good drive, which will be due in November, and then our toy drive, which will be due in December. So if we can start again, and that's again, will be put in the WhatsApp, four canned goods per person, uh, every single meeting per member. And then with that, once you bring your four canned goods and one toy, I will personally pay for you to get an extra ticket for our 50-50 raffle, just so that it can add a little bit of incentive for us to all be able to participate. And even if we can't do anything physically, we can at least bring four canned goods and one brand new toy um, per every single meeting until December. All right. Let's see, and then also starting next month, um, our 50-50 raffles, obviously you can have the cash option, but we will have gift cards, some coupons to different local businesses, and also either uh, some jewelry. So it might be a bracelet, it might be um, some earrings or something like that, because we're partnering up with different people. So then if you don't want the cash option, you might want the jewelry, then you can definitely take that option as well. And next month, we will have Tony Francis with Medicare Max um, on September 1st, telling us all about the lovely things with Medicare. And so that's all for the service report. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce my friend. Yes, we have a new member. We do have a new member. Okay, so I will pause the and then come back and reintroduce, or introduce my friend, Chris All right. David. Yes, so this one's super quick. We have a brand new lion that we want to recognize. Um, so I want to go ahead and I, you know, normally we do inductions in the past, we, you know, 
Last year we did a, a bulk induction at the annual meeting. The year before we did a major induction at our annual meeting. This year we want to try and actually recognize people every month when they come. You know, you join the club, you become a member, we want you to go ahead and actually re be recognized for your contribution to our community. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and call up Tammy Howell. Yes, no, All right, so I'm going to put my arm around you. This is Tammy. She is our Hi. brand new lion. She is also part of the Leo Advisory Committee this year, which we love because Leos are our future. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I just want you to say if you're good with that or not, all right? Yes, sir. Are you good with coordinating activities to service Katie? Yes. Are you good with fostering and creating a spirit of understanding here in the community? Yes. Are you good with promoting the principle of good government and good citizenship? Certainly. Are you looking to take an active interest in the civic, cultural, social, and moral welfare of Katie? I certainly am. Are you looking to unite our members in the bonds of friendship, good fellowship, and mutual understanding? Yes, sir. Are you looking to provide a forum for the open discussion of all the matters of public interest? Yes. And are you looking to encourage service-minded people to serve Katie without personal financial reward and to encourage efficiency and promote the high ethical standards in the commerce, industry, profession, public works, and private endeavors? All right, as president, I welcome you to the Katie Lions Club. Thank you. Dad, you want to buy a 50 50? Before Chris starts? And now I want to call Tiffany back up. Oh, I got her chains on now. Okay. So you're off for this one. So just remember, we do 50 50 and it's much later. Yes. Hey, I like to build the every little bit I can. Yes. Yeah. Let's build that part up, guys. Let's build that part up. All righty. Um, I want to talk to you about Chris Bowman. Chris is the owner and independent merchant services broker at Merchant Pro Express Texas. Throughout his career, Chris has always been a driven award-winning sales leader and highly regarded referral partner. Chris values all of his partner's relationship as much as he values his clients. Being independent means that Chris has the ability to lower rates and never raise them. On average, he has saved most businesses up to 50% on their credit card processing fees. Through his partnerships and relationships, he is able to work with almost any business and website in the United States, as well as most software and hardware in the market today. He was also part of the original team that delivered the Clover POS system to the market and in the U.S. and has been a longtime expert and contributor to its enhancement of its growth. And if you guys have not been to any type of boba tea, space, they mostly have the Clover, along with other businesses at Clover, where you could just tap your phone and, and go and collect points in order to come back for their loyalty program. All right, so without further ado, Mr. Chris Bowman with Merchant Pro Express, Texas. Good evening, Lions. I'm Chris Bowman with Merchant Pro Express, Texas. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, I didn't want to do any slides uh, today. I wanted to be informal to talk about cybersecurity, how you can protect yourself, some of the safer ways to take non-cashless transactions uh, at uh, gas stations and things like that. I did want to talk about one little hobby that I do have. Uh, over the past couple of years, I grew up in the restaurant business, uh, coming moving to Texas in 2012. Uh, just circumstances with friends just started getting into barbecuing in Michigan barbecue is a lot different than Texas barbecue and uh, we are on the competition circuit now so we've uh, been in five competitions we're going to be comp uh, competing again September 24th in El Campo uh, Texas we took 12th in ribs last year down in El Campo out of 79 teams so we do cook some good food um, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about today, different cards, right? We all have wallets and purses. I was trying to, over the past couple of years, uh, or two years ago, before COVID, there was a statistic out there, and I wanted to play a little trivia with you guys. So if we were in this space here, in a public space, and you realize that your purse had been taken, how long do you think that time frame would have taken? to realize that your purse had been taken. If we're in a public space in a meeting like we are today. Uh, it'd be a while. 
Yeah. yeah, it's about two and a half hours. How long do you think it would take for a, a female to know that her phone is missing? Thir 13 minutes. 13 minutes. So what happens to us, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit, and I didn't grab my phone. Could you bring my phone, Dave? So, um, you know, I have a wallet here, and what can happen is I have a proximity reader. I can scan every Meg strip card in that wallet because on the back of those Meg strips is every is all of our personal data. So when you hear about credit card breaches and things like that, that's the data that they're snagging is off of this strip, okay? So that's at your address, your zip code, your social security, all that stuff is built in on that, okay? So what has come out after that is what's called EMV. Does anybody know what EMV stands for? Okay, it's European MasterCard and Visa. Why? it says European is because that technology has actually been out for years, almost 15 years now, 14 years. Uh, so when, if you, anybody have been overseas lately, sometimes like they don't, if you're handing over their card and it didn't have a chip, they don't even know how to take that card. Their machines don't even have a strip read, okay? Um, some of the other things that happen uh, in that is, uh, that is a computer chip. There's an antenna that runs through this card, and what will happen in the future is that, just like this card that I have here, and I'll pass these around, there's no credit card number on this card here. There's just the chip, there still is the strip, because uh, not everybody's switched over to, to that, and it'll probably be years uh, before they do that. But <clears throat> what will happen in the future, and why um, it's going to be beneficial to the banks, issuing banks and Visa, MasterCard of that sort, is when you guys go to, like right now, I have Southwest asking me to upgrade my card to a different rewards level. They won't have to reissue me a card. What would happen is the next dip device, when I go to insert that card, it's going to reset to whatever that they switched it to, right? Um, so these are little mini computers. So again, proximity reader, read every one of my cards because of the mag strips. But with these chips, those are separate computers that if I have 10 credit cards in here, a hacker is going to have to hack into 10 different computers to get the, all of that data. Does that make sense? So the one of the best things right now, and people are afraid of this and they don't understand how it works, is inside your phones you have a wallet, whether it's an Apple wallet or a Samsung wallet, because when you, and here's different security uh, layers for you to get, so just bear with me, right? I do my face recognition, so that's a biometric that the hacker's going to have to hack in to even open my phone. Then I'm going to have to go into my wallet, and once you've scanned a card into your wallet, and I don't know if any of you have done this, Chase or whoever is going to send you a letter and say, here is your Apple ID card, right? It's not even, it's only the last four digits of the card, but it's like a 20 digit number. Has it, people out here already been using a electronic? Okay. So, so then none of that card information, again, is not in that system, right? But now when you're doing the transactions, which we call NFS, near field uh, communication, or NFC, near, near field communication, your MILA, uh, centimeters away from that transaction. So what happened in Target was they had pin pads that spiderware was coming down in between the encryption of the pin pad and the software because the, they were compromised back into a server, a dead man server that they didn't know that existed. They weren't doing updates on that server or anything, but the thieves found it. I have some cyber friends that um, do, uh, that they hire cybersecurity, right? They're headhunters and things like that. And they said, Chris, what you don't understand is these companies, I'll just throw somebody out there, I'm trying to think of somebody who's got a few locations. Uh, Star Furniture, let's say, right? There's six, six seven, they, they might have one or two IT people to, to handle all their systems, right? 
but if a cyber syndicate wants to get into their systems there might be ten fifteen maybe even twenty people all day long trying to find some kind of weakness inside that corporation to be able to to steal that information does that make sense now as consumer consumers or even employees you guys can actually harm the, the companies that you're working for if you maliciously open up emails that you're not familiar with right and you're clicking on these hyperlinks you're opening up malware if you save your username and passwords not into an encrypted password wallet through Norton or, or some other third party to, to hold that data um, you could be putting your you know where you're employed at at risk and that happens all the time when you hear this in the news that's usually how they're getting in is is from somebody doing something in an email or you know it, it's almost like somebody breaking into a building and leaving you know you left the window unlocked right they could walk right in and do whatever they they want that's kind of how that works and I know I'm kind of trying to paint like visual pictures so you guys can kind of think of of what to do um, I have different cards here uh, the other thing um, is that you'll see I wrote test on here um, what I use because the, these are test cards but if I these were my real credit cards I would have CID right but MasterCard just passed probably about six months ago that you don't even have to sign for MasterCard anymore I don't know if you guys have noticed that um, that they're not asking for signatures anymore because it really doesn't you, you see how you you sign those nobody can Most read that anyway. right yeah because I haven't signed mine I but I do put CID <laughs> and clerks do ask me um, you know I was sitting in O'Hare Airport one day and just think of this here's here's your guest check coming guest check comes you put your credit card down the guy next to him is working on his iPad takes a picture of the front of the card right the bartender comes back, brings my card back. Now it's upside down on the ticket. I could be doing something else or whatever. He takes the other picture. Now he has all of my card information plus the CVV code, everything else that's on there. So just be mindful of where your cards are going. That's why there's a lot of pay at the table, which I do sell systems for restaurants that can do pay at the table. Um, so that doesn't even leave your site anymore. Again, over in Europe, everything's pretty much handheld they don't you, you never get to uh, they never take your card away but I'm gonna pass these around and uh, so one has doesn't have a chip right that would be a good referral for me if they can't accept chips right there's still businesses out there that cannot this one does have a chip and then this one does not have a card number on it okay um, so let's talk about looking for skimming devices so when you are coming up to um, a device I always kind of wiggle it right I was searching for this video my computer crashed probably about a year and a half ago and I had a good video of a, a convenience store where two people were standing in line they were working together the first guy gets the clerk's attention you know oh, I want those whatever he was pointing at cigarettes or whatever the guy goes off camera the clerk goes off camera the guy behind him had a satchel comes right over puts and these are pin pads that you see at Target or whatever put the shell and it was a full shell right over the pin pad and that was the skimming device so they would keep that for however many hours and then they would come back and grab it um, I've seen bank videos where ATMs if you start really starting to watch ATMs now, the newer ones will be circle. There will be a circle around where you insert the card. Um, some of them will keep the card, but if it inserts the card into it, what it's doing is inverts the card so it can't be skimmed. So there's different things like that. If you're getting money out of an ATM, especially like at a convenience store, the cameras are starting to get so micro because what they do is they put the skimming device where you've inserted or swiped your card, but then there's a camera to watch where you're putting your PIN number, and then they take the the date, the timestamp, and match it to to um, to where so they know okay this card number is this PIN, okay? So you want to try to cup your hand, 
I'm, I'm getting good now where I can keep my hand like this and I can actually move my finger around and you can't tell. Think back about five years ago, pin pads, they used to have like the little pushy buttons, right? The little rubbery type buttons. Mm -hmm. When the phones started coming out, you could have um, thermal sensor, right? The camera, you could switch it to thermal. And so some a thief could stand behind you after you just swipe that with the skimming device and be able to, from the heat source on those pads, that's why they went away from those, is because they could keep the heat sensor a little bit longer and they could tell what those buttons were pushed, okay? Um, let's move to petrol. So now we're at a gas station. A lot of skimming devices now are Bluetooth, right? So if you go into your phone, and I was trying to find one, I got a new phone about six months ago and I haven't been by a skimming device, but I used to have some that I uh, saved. So if you open up your phone right now and, and go into um, where your Bluetooth is at, and it would show, and if you see a bunch of numbers, do you see, does anybody have any where like eight digit numbers, numbers that you wouldn't think that was to anything? It wouldn't say Bose speaker or anything like that. It's gonna be a row of numbers. Does anybody have that in theirs? No? Okay, well that's good. But that's how you can be standing at a gas station to see if there is a skimming device in in the area. The most common place I know is down here at the corner of Elrod and Brand, that little Exxon is repeatedly notifications out on our neighborhood Facebook page that there's their cards have gotten scammed at that particular Exxon. Okay. So I won't go there for gas. Yeah. Have, <laughs> have, have David have David email me or text me that address because I want to go check that out yeah, so as like well. I, like I said, the corner L Rod and Friends. Yeah. Little Exxon. Okay. But David if you could do that for me just so for, as a reminder because I would like to check that out. But um did you find any, Tiffany? Because you've been you've been up in Dallas and everything too. No. Okay. So, um, but so because what, right now those those micro cameras are are getting like almost like tape, right? They're getting thin. So, what's happened? And, and I skip. Let's go back to the ATMs. So, I've seen bank surveillance videos because I sit in those those meetings and I get to see the footage, and you'll see. The guy, and they don't care that they're being seen on camera. They go right there, you see them place the skimming device, and you see the time, two hours, four hours go by. You see them come back and take the skimming device off. And they got all of that, that data and information, and they'll go from one bank to the other, right? But back to the petrol. Personally, I would not get any gas on the outside pumps. I mean, I would never get gas out there because that's where there's um, blocked views from cameras. That's usually the farthest distance from the buildings as well. And so um, try to get on the inside pumps. Um, not so much cyber because we're talking gas right now, but just so you guys know, because it's so hot and gas is so expensive, you don't want to get gas during the day. You want to try to get gas at night. My, I grew up, uh, my grand, my dad owned two mobile service stations when I was younger and a fuel oil company. So you, you have physics, condensation, right? Gas uh, evaporates into gas. So when you're pumping, you're not getting the full liquid of the, the fuel. So you wanna get early in the morning, later at night uh, on these hot days, right? And you don't wanna fall again because there's gonna be that vapor in the pumps, you don't want, you know how there's three settings on the on the handle? You want to do middle or, or low. Don't do fast, because you're just pumping air into your into your tank and you're, you're paying for that, okay? So just little, little tricks. Um, <clears throat> E-commerce, right? Online sales. Typically, I set up a PayPal account, go through PayPal, or I have a credit card that has a low limit. I don't, I'm not usually buying $1,000 item online. I mean, we're starting to get to that, right? Because Wayfair, other, other outfits are starting to, to uh, you know, 
get in a higher ticket average online. Um, we're not just buying Amazon items anymore. Um, but you want to do that so if somehow they did hack into your system, they don't have your checking account, access to however many funds are in there, um, things like that. Does that make sense? Um, I do have only a few more minutes, but I did want to have, like, because I know this is a hot topic, that people have other personal experiences of, of where they've either had some kind of fraud or things like that. So does anybody have questions about a different type of industry or something that you might help? You know, back to the petrol. So some of the things that I do also is I don't put my, uh, I go to, you just mentioned Exxon. I don't know if anybody in here uses the Exxon app, but again, I open my phone with my face, I open up the Exxon app, and if we were at an Exxon station right now, it would pull up the pump numbers. I would go, I'm at pump four, I would hit that, I put in another four digit code into that, it activates the pump. I never put my card in, I take it out, fill, fill it up, and you actually get rewards for that as well. Okay, so, yeah. The way the phone cameras are now, I mean, you can take a picture of this, you know, I can take a picture of that box back there and I can zoom in and see everything in that box now. Oh. <clears throat> so I don't even know how close you'd have to be nowadays. Back then you had to be kind of close because you had yeah. to you had to pick up the heat signature back then. So no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, well, if it's one where it's alerted, where it's found it, right, where you could click on it, I would alert the, the station, right? I <clears throat> Well, just don't, <clears throat> just don't okay. click on it. You just know that it's in the proximity. It's like if we're trying to find a Wi-Fi and everybody's Wi-Fi in the strip mall is coming up, it's the same thing. There's a, there's a Bluetooth device there. Right. Yeah. Because usually Bluetooth devices, if you look, they're usually named something if they're legit. It's the ones with all the digits that usually, those are usually, from my experience, that they're skimming devices. Yeah. Is there a way to, to put on your phone to alert you if you're in the proximity of? You, well, there, there, are, there are paid apps and things like that that you can do just like with your wallets or your purse. You can get the, you know, you can get those metal blockers, you know, the RFP blocks you know, where you can spend the extra money for that. But there are paid apps out there that, you know, you can do that or you can um, block your signal as well. Yeah, <clears throat> so the wallet's gonna, you know, I use that a lot, wherever I can. But there's a lot of places out there that still cannot take Apple Pay. Apple Pay right, yeah. and those are good, and I'm not, you know, trying to get business, but those are good referrals for me. If you guys are out in the public and you're seeing that, hey, this stuff is old. You, you guys know what the old terminals look like. Yeah, when you got these great big terminals, you know, it's not sleek looking. You know, right? Because just this year, just because I I handle five different processors, I'm a broker, so I have access to 30 different types of terminals but like 10 of them have been discontinued just this year. We call them um, sunsetted, and then end of life is gonna be where they can't, I can't board anybody with them anymore. You guys might still be able to use those devices, but then when they go to end of life, which will probably be six months or eight months from now, then they're gonna be cut off. And a, a few of those have already happened because they can't, the, their computers, the new encryption codes, they can't hold because the memory in those uh, aren't big enough. Does that make sense? Any other question? Did I answer all your questions, Ms. Green? So far. Okay. Um, and did I miss anything? Have you guys uh, on cyber? Excuse me. Yeah? I have a question. You may have saved me, but I'm throwing you in. Right. Does all credit cards have the same ID for the information? You no. know, simple. No. Okay. Every card is, is different. Okay. They have a different marker. Yeah. You uh, you mentioned that you know when you go to the grocery store or whatever you can kind of see if the the machine is loose. How would I identify if there's a skimmer on the gas station pump itself? 
So you would see a green light or a red light usually flashing, but I always take my hand because it's that little swiper and I just wiggle it because they're gonna, they're not glued on, right? They're gonna be so they can pop them off. So if, if, if it wiggles a little bit, I should say a little, but you, you would know. When you feel that for the first time, you're gonna know that, uh oh, I better tell. And, and, and I'm saying don't drive away. You need to, you need to alert those clerks. Right. Can you take it off? You could, but what happens if the cyber criminal is sitting there in the parking lot watching? You take it off and you step off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're there in the parking lot watching, and you have to have that gun in their car. Yeah. So they'll just put it down as road rage instead of (laughs) putting it. Same thing, and and we don't. And I do. I I've been doing this for 15 years, so I do. And my dad owned gas stations, so I look at this stuff. I know you guys probably don't look at this. Hopefully you will going forward. But even the, there's tape that tapes to see if the, the pump has been open, the actual doors, and you'll see that's broke. And you're supposed to call that number on the, uh, on the, the, on the seal, pump. Yeah, because yeah. those seals, that's where, when there was that ring that was happening, you know. Yeah, they, my parents had a gas station before you could pay the pump. Yeah, so, they, so <laughs> those, those skimming devices were different. They put those, they added those right into the pump, right? So that was even more sophisticated than what I'm just talking about where they popped it over the top. They actually built that into the, they they literally opened up the, and wired it all in. So it's amazing what we see. And, and that's why I like to do what I do is because every six months, something's changed because some 14 year old kid came up with some hat code or some something way to do it. And it's amazing how smart these these people are. Yeah. Well, the kids have the time to devote to it. And yeah. It's a and, and I've been I I've personally been compromised three times. I was with a proximity reader. They went in between. Uh, there was a guy drawing car- cartoons at a bar over in the corner, and then he got in between me, drew it, and I had to fly back from San Antonio back to Michigan because they my bank knew what I do, and I had to go talk with with the. FBI agents and everything. They ended up catching them. I just recently had one where I had a new credit card. It was actually sitting home in my top treasure drawer. And they all of a sudden I get this alert from the credit card company saying, we're putting your card on hold and I, I please call us. And it turned out my card was being used at no less than seven different Kroger stores. And I don't know how they, they managed to get my number because, yeah. like I said, the card had been in the dresser drawer for two months. It could have been a, a more of an inside job of, it at the mail server. Could, there's so that. many scenarios that I've seen over the years. Um, you know what? And I, I don't sell this stuff, but if you guys don't have a, a, a company, you know, a, a fraud detect company like LifeLock or something like that, I've been on LifeLock for years, and they have saved me probably five, six times. I could bring it up they tried and what it was was they had my wife's information some of it and they had some of mine and they were trying to do payday loans three times they've tried to do payday loans with our information but they have it mixed together so it didn't go through or um, Home Depot they try to open up an account Macy's they try to open up an account and uh, so it's out there just think we're in, in this room we're a little bit older right back when we were going to the dentist 15 years ago, we write all of our information on it. Those are those files have been sitting in boxes, right? They probably didn't shred them. They throw them in a dumpster, you know. And all of a sudden, they just start running, trying to find. Does this one work? Does this one not? You know, it's not your card information, but it's your social security number and all this other stuff. Well, I had a friend that actually she had never run a credit report. And I said to her, you know, just for tips and giggles, why don't you do it through Credit Karma? And all of a sudden she found out that she was had all these cards in her name. It turned out the person was ordering cards and actually going to her mailbox and intercepting these cards. So there was all this credit in her name. Yep. What, what, that what it? it took her, and what it was is they were actually piggybacking off of other people's credit cards and adding her on as a signer and an and approved person on other people's credit cards. Yeah. So she turned around and had to go and notify all these companies that appeared on her credit report yeah, that what? these were false 
cards that she had never requested them and also filed an alert through the post office because the person was actually intercepting her mail. And what's nice, you know, for whatever it is, I, I have a bigger package because I got a family, but whatever, it's, I think it's like $30 a month for an individual for the life lot, but they got an insurance policy. So if all that stuff kind of happens, they just handle it, mm -hmm. but they call me, right? Even when I go to apply for where I've actually applied for something, I get an alert. Is this you? Are you doing this with Chase Bank? Yes, no. And then you know, well, they, they call. Well, actually does that with me as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, but that's, I mean, it's it's a scary world out there. We just, we gotta stay ahead of them. Uh, when I say them, the cyber thieves, because like you said, it could even be your cousin. You know, you, you don't, you just don't know. The one time I was compromised, I was traveling down to Indiana because that was part of my territory. And I would, I'm a creature of habit. So I try to stay at the same hotels because I like to know the staff, you know, because I, you know, you're traveling there a lot. You're staying there for a week. You, you want to you know, be able to conversate, right? right yeah. So I was doing that for about eight months, talking to the same bartender. Well, one time I go to travel in, I go to the hotel, I flip the TV on, and I had already been compromised like two weeks before that and uh, had to get all new cards and I couldn't figure it out. And it was my corporate card. Oh. Um, and uh, so I'm looking and I'm saying, Hey, that's Billy. So I turn it up, and he's caught for credit card fraud. And what he did, he had a skimming device behind the bar, and he was skimming everybody's thing because he was by three hotels, the the restaurant was. And so he was just skimming people's, and people wouldn't even know because they just flew in, they flew out. You know, they're there for a couple of days, and you know, it wasn't like it here in Katy, like it's a destination. It was. It was just business people coming in and coming out. Wow. So it was, it was weird. So, and I talked to that guy for months. I, I wouldn't say he was a friend, but he was an acquaintance. Oh, and it was yeah. like, geez. And you might have been one of the courts. said yours a big Yeah, my, yeah I'm, I'm sure, course. I'm sure he was the one that, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he was the one that compromised it. So, yeah. Anything else? Did you shut him down? <laughs> yeah, well, he already got, uh, he was already arrested. That's why that was on the news. So, but the, you know, this, the ones with the proximity reader, yes, I got, I flew back. Uh, they caught him. Um, when I was at a processor that I worked for, that's what moved me here. Uh, we caught um, 20 people in Chicago. Because before, it's so big now. Before, even I get compromised, I should say compromised, I get reached out by cyber criminals at least twice a month through my website to set up credit card processing companies all over the country. I get, and so I go on Google Earth, look and say, because I had one, it was a tow truck company out of, a, or not a tow truck, it was a, a funeral home. But where the address was, when you Google Earth it, you're out in the middle of a field. I mean, there was a couple miles before the next road in the field, and that's where this was showing up on Google Earth. And then, so then I called the funeral home because nothing was matching up on their website of who I was on the, the, the sign, you know, who would be the president and everything. So I called him. He goes, that's funny. You're the third person that's called this week telling us that we've been, you know, and I said, well, if you don't have LifeLock, you better get it now because it's this, 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 and this year. Yeah, that's my social. I said, well, I have it. So, <laughs> and it came through my website. So, uh, but it's out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 rampant. It is, and that's why I just do your due diligence. Do some of the tricks that I showed you. If you're not using, you know, um, more digital, try to stretch yourself to learn and understand a little bit how that works. Well, we have to travel without the numbers. Are they going to be sending it out to us, or do we request that? No, uh, they'll start doing it. You can request it. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's all going to be by the card issuer. I mean, I have cards here where the card number's not on the front. Oh, it's wow. only on the back. Yeah, a lot of mine's on yeah. the back. Yeah. So you see things starting to switch. Um, so, but that's, that's all that I have.
I have business cards too, like if you know um, people that need help or need education on that. So, is that good? Yes, thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you. Not gonna lie, I love the fact that we're like seven minutes ahead of schedule, which is awesome. Thank you, thank you, a lot of valuable information. I want to give a special thanks again to uh, Paul Oxenheim of Generation Solar. He's the one who uh, helped make sure that this uh, event was done without costing our organization money. Um, and again, thank you so much to uh, Chris Bowman for being our guest speaker. Um, before we close out the night, there's a couple other items I want to just bring up, just since we're ahead of schedule. First, if you have not yet bought a 50-50 raffle ticket, Treasurer Sue right there, she's shaking the chin, she wants your money. Um, and also... And also I want to uh, bring everyone up to speed on just a couple of items um, coming up. Next week, uh, Thursday, next week Thursday, that is the 11th, um, our club right here at FCC K822-101 Morton Ranch Road, we will be hosting a vision screening uh, training and certification on the Plus Optics machine. Plus Optics is one of the most widely used vision screening devices in the United States and Canada. Um, Lions clubs around the nation and actually around the world use this machine. Um, so this event, this training, whether you are a lion or not, doesn't matter. We want you to come out, we want you to learn about this, we want you to get trained. Um, we have our very own district governor, Paul Moore, is going to be our trainer. Um, he's making that special trip out and we want this room packed. If we can get 20, 30, 40, 50 people trained, that will make a huge impact in the Katy community. So if you know anyone, if you yourself are interested, please make sure you RSVP before the end of day, August 9th. Uh, that's end of day next week, Tuesday. Um, and that's just email iassist at katielions.org and RSVP for that. And without further ado, Treasurer Sue, would you please come up? Yeah, I'm gonna have to draw a ticket before I come up. Sitting by him. Oh, Trish didn't, Trish. Hang on, hang on, before you try, Trish, you do know that, of course, now that we just had Chris tell us, you do know we offer Square so you can actually spend your money with us, right? Electronic, like bill? You can bill it or cash that way? You can get us your money electronically. <laughs> that was a nip. Ah, uh, you mind Well, all right then. Congratulations, Treasurer Sue. I guess you just won some. Uh, How much did you win? Oh, roughly eleven dollars. Hey, all right. Well, that just means that the club also yes. earned eleven dollars. You know right. what? Dollars and cents. That matters. So thank you everyone for coming out. Thank you everyone who is catching this live tonight, and thank you everyone who's going to catch this uh, recordings in the future. All right. Now, one thing I want to announce, oh, okay. and our president does not want to hear this, but I want us all to join in singing Happy Birthday, David, because on Monday, August 8th, he will be turning 30 years old. Aww. Happy birthday.